Hi everyone, my name is Tuan Nguyen, and today I'm going to be talking about the second article uh, entitled Scarless Genome Editing of Human Pluripotent Stem Cells Via Transient Pyromycin Selection. I, I know that's a lot, but we're going to cover basically every part of that uh, title. Before I start, um, here's a general outline of what I'm going to be talking about. First, I'll go into some background. For example, I'll go into background on CRISPR-Cas9 systems. Uh, this is a big part of the paper, CRISPR-Cas9 systems. I'll go into HDR or homology directory repair for, uh, and non-homologous end joining. Then I'll also go into scarless genome editing. After that, I'll delve into past research, what has been done to increase editing efficiencies. Um, and then I will go into the current experiment where I'll address the research and hypothesis and the questions. Then I'll go into each of the figures, discussion and conclusion, and then my proposed experiment for future experiments. As a quick note, on the bottom, I will have a outline of what I'm going to be talking about and whichever section I'm on will be highlighted, just for convenience. So what are CRISPR-Cas9 systems? Well, well CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. Now this was initially found in bacteria, so if you look at the figure on the bottom, on the very left you have a virus shown in red in the bacteria. Uh, what the virus does is it latches on to the bacteria and inserts its either DNA or RNA. Now what this bacteria has is a cast protein, which you'll see in the middle figure. Um, it has a cast protein that kind of takes a, a screenshot or a, um, a, an image or a picture of that virus. So what it does is it actually takes some of that DNA and it adds it to CRISPR or the clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats. And it creates that, uh, see the red separated by different spaces, then, then more red. Um, so that this is important because the next time that the virus comes, which is the figure on the right, and it inserts its DNA, what that Cas protein can do really, really quickly is uh, grab that piece from CRISPR, find that virus, and cut that virus so that it negates it. So this system was initially in bacteria, but it, it has been kind of evolved for more of a research setting. Uh, in more of a research setting, it basically means that you can identify almost any part of a, a genome and you can edit that, that area. So CRISPR-Cas9 systems are made up of two different parts. First of all, you have your CRISPR-associated endonuclease or the Cas protein, and you also have an sgRNA. Now what this sgRNA does is that it guides the Cas protein to whatever specific site that you want in the genome. Um, this Cas protein holds that sgRNA and then um, what after, like I said before, the sgRNA leads the Cas protein to the specific DNA sequence and what this Cas protein does is it cuts the DNA sequence using its two nucleus do domains. So if you look at the bottom figure, it's exactly what I just said. Uh, you see the Cas protein right here with an sgRNA just shown in red. It leads it to a specific sequence. Uh, it unwinds the DNA and the RNA, or the sgRNA uh, latches on to, uh, this is the protospacer. And then um, it causes a double stranded break shown right here. So you have just one DNA over here and a DNA over there. Now what this is called when the Cas protein uh, breaks the DNA part is a double stranded break. So these double chain of breaks can lead to many different uh, pathways. Um, for example, it could lead to non-homologous end joining or even homology directed repair. So first we're gonna cover the non-homologous end joining, which is shown on the left. So there are four different options basically that can happen after a double chain of break occurs. You can either have a wild type or uh, in other words, the two DNA ends are just combined back together as if nothing happened. Um, you could also have an insertion or deletion, uh, or these are also called indels. So an insertion is just insertion of nucleotides that are floating randomly, um, causing the DNA to be a little bit longer. Or you could even have a, a deletion where uh, the DNA gets shorter. Um, yeah. And then you could also have a frame shift mutation. So what this happens is that DNA, the DNA gene is read differently. So DNA proteins are read in uh, I think three nucleotides. So let's say that you have deletion that would uh, basically just change um, how the DNA gene is read. You could also have a homology directed repair or HDR. 
Um, this is when, after a double chain of break, you introduce uh, the DNA template that you want. So if you look at the, the figure right here, um, you have a template DNA just shown in purple. Say that you have a double strand of break. You introduce the homology or the template DNA. And what can happen um, is that this template DNA gets inserted into the DNA sequence. Uh, however, HDR is very rare because most of the time you could have something like indels or friendship mutations. So the reason why CRISPR-Cas systems are so important is because they're very applicable. You can create isogenic cell lines for different mutations. Uh, isogenic just means that these cell lines differ in just one, uh, one gene. Um, however, uh, okay, so for the workflow of CRISPR-Cas systems, what you do is you, you have to transfect these Cas proteins with your desired uh, template um, just to try to increase uh, the homology director repair of where your, uh, your template gets inserted into the genome. However, depending on the type of cassette that you're using, parts of that cassette can be integrated permanently into the genome. Now, ultimately, this is not desired just because, one, it could create mysteries of mRNA, and two, it could create mysteries of protein translation. So this is, this is not what you want. Um, so then that brings us into Scarlet's genome editing. Scarlet's genome editing refers to the integration of your desired sequence without other undesired insertions of DNA sequences. Uh, these methods could be used to either correct or create mutations in genome. However, the insertion of our desired sequence is easier said than done. For example, it is, uh, it is very, very difficult to isolate edited clones and to distinguish those from the non-edited clones. Uh, some researchers, like the one in this paper, uses what's called single-stranded oligonucleotide donors, or SSODNs. Um, and what this does is that it helps reduce the chance of undesired insertions uh, other than your desired template. So I think uh, it says that in the paper that plasmids and double-stranded DNA has a more likely chance of being integrated into the, into the genome, which is sometimes not what you want. Um, but before we get into the experiment, we're going to delve into some strategies to, that have been used to, one, increase efficiency of screening edited clones, and uh, two, increase ratio of homology director pair or non homologous end joining, and three, improve overall editing efficiency. The first one that we'll take a look at um, is the strategies used for increasing efficiency of screening edited clones. So one of the methods that was mentioned in the paper is called piggyback transposon method. Um, what this essentially does is that you have to co-transfect your cells with the piggyback vector, and then uh, I think it's the excision-only piggyback transposase. Now, what this essentially does is that whatever DNA template that you want to insert into your genome, um, it gets inserted with these two vectors in transposase, and then what happens after that is that um, this transposase is able to be taken out of the cell. So it kind of reduces the amount of integration, unwanted integrations that um, you you can get. However, the only downsides to these is that you can disrupt gene expression and you can disrupt uh, human pluripotent stem cell maintenance. All right, next we're going to delve into some strategies that try to increase the ratio of homology director repair and non-homologous end joining. So there are different methods for this. For example, um, you can time your cast protein delivery. So depending on what part of the uh, cell division that these cells are in, um, you can just insert your cast protein at a given time that optimizes uh, HGR efficiency. Um, however, since many of, uh, there are a lot of different cells um, this would be extremely difficult to optimize in cell lines. Now you could also try to introduce some type of, some type of factors that promote homology direct repair or inhibit non-homologous end joining. Um, but like I said before, similar to the timed cast protein delivery, it's very difficult to optimize in all cell lines. All right, lastly, we're gonna look at strategies that try to improve overall editing efficiency. So if you remember from the lecture, we talked about expression of uh, proteins. Proteins can either have 
um, for example, inducible or constitutive expression. Um, I took these definitions straight from the lecture. So, for example, inducible um, means that it directs gene expression in response to a chemical signal. Or you could have constitutive, um, where it allows for continual expression in cell types independent of developmental stage. So depending on, you can increase homology directory repair if you choose to have either inducible or constitutive Cas9 protein expression. Um, the only problem with this is that, um, for example, you can create permanent integration of your Cas9 protein, which is not what you want, um, just because this would ultimately mean that your integration of your template DNA is not scarless editing. Now, what um, some researchers have done too um, is use a single cell sorter machine. Um, uh, essentially, what you have is you have your Cas9 protein, which is fused to a green fluorescent protein. You can see that plasmid down at the bottom. Um, it's just the, the circle right here. So, like I said before, your Cas9 protein fused to a GFP or green fluorescent protein. You transfect your cells. So, cells normally would not have any fluorescence. And then once you transfect, uh, these cells would fluoresce uh, the green fluorescent protein if the Cas9 was successfully uh, inserted into the cell. However, um, this is just a reporter transfection and it's not necessary gene editing. So your Cas protein could, could get inside the cell. However, when you introduce that uh, template DNA, it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, that template DNA was actually um, successfully had homology direct repair. Um, one of the downsides of this method as well is that it's very time consuming. So let's say that you transfect your cells, you go get your cells sorted, um, and then you have to grow those cells up. So from a single cell, it takes about, I'd say about two weeks to grow. And then after that, you have to transfer it to a larger well and you continually do that. So I would say that the entire workflow of this process is nearing uh, nearing a month. So it's a very, very time consuming process. Now, um, what has been used is, or in the past, is a pyromycin and acetyl transferase um, in conjunction with transfections. Um, so pyromycin and acetyl transferase, which is called PAC, it's an antibiotic. And what happens is that researchers have combined a PAC resistant gene with the Cas9. Um, so what that means is that uh, after these cells are transfected with the Cas9 and the PAC resistant gene, the cells that successfully have the PAC resistant gene, um, once you introduce the, the PAC antibiotic into, let's say, like the media, um, the cells that have the resi resistant gene would survive, the other ones would die. So now this brings us to the researcher's hypothesis and the questions of this research experiment. So what these researchers aim to do actually is to use that pyromycin treatment, so that antibiotic treatment, and to see if they're able to um, increase the efficiency and enrich for HGR mediated genome editing. So the first question is just what I said, uh, can pyromycin treatment enrich for HGR mediated genome editing? The second one is uh, how does pyromycin treatment compare to traditional uh, reporters of transfection methods? So um, how does it fare against a Cas9 protein combined with a GFP protein? Does it, um, do they create more clones that actually have HGR uh, successfully implemented? Um, you could also, or the last question is, can pyromycin treatment insert and correct mutations? So what we'll find here in this presentation is that um, these researchers chose disease-specific genes and what they did was they could they either tried to insert that gene into uh, the cells or correct one of these mutations. Now, lastly, their hypothesis is stringent selection for cells expressing high amounts of Cas9 might facilitate not only increased rates of gene knockout, but also increased HGR when co-delivered with a single-stranded oligonucleotide. Um, just as a note too, um, the disease-relevant loci that they chose, um, they have one gene called BEST1, uh, which is just associated with ret retinal dystrophy, so like um, a disease affecting your vision. And they also have one um, MECP2, 
which deals with Rett syndrome.